What is going on guys, Coach Show, not at the lion's den, we're actually in the lion's lair, aka my basement. Uh, but in this video, we are going to be recapping my latest strongman competition, PA's Strongest Man, which was held at the lion's den. Very cool. Uh, so let's get right on into it. So it's been about a year since I've competed. The last competition I had was 2019 Nationals where I took first as the heavyweight champion. And I just wanted to get back into competing. I had a competition scheduled April of uh, 2020, but with everything going on that was canceled. And then later on, had a very cool opportunity to have PA Strongest Man hosted at the Lions Den. Uh, and last minute, I kind of signed up uh, with a bunch of other athletes from the gym. And that was what I wanted to compete in. Now, PA Strongest Man is a little bit in a Nostalgic for me because three years ago when I got into my strongman journey, it was actually the first competition uh, where I made my debut as a strongman athlete and I took first in that competition. So just getting into this comp, uh, I was really excited to have another crack at the PA title uh, and also just get back into competing. So getting right into it, I'm going to go over the events and kind of just my thought process and overall recap of the competition. So First event, starting right off the bat, we had a Viking press. Uh, so for my weight class, it was 300 pounds for as many reps as possible in 60 seconds. Now, a Viking press is basically a push press contraption uh, with a neutral grip. So you can see it in the video, uh, that's what the Viking press looks like. And in this event, we were not allowed to do any jerk variation. So it either had to be a strict press or a push press. And if you guys have been following me for a long time, really what made me excel in pressing events is me relying on the jerk variations uh, and sometimes falling back on the push press, but my push press really needed to improve. Uh, and that's something I've been trying to increase over the last year or so to be more competitive uh, in the sport of strongman. So a lot of pressing was in the last several weeks of my training. I was pressing three to four times per week. Uh, and as you can see in this video, I really came out and had a dominant performance. I actually got 31 reps on the Viking press at 300 pounds, uh, which really set the tone for the competition. Uh, and since I signed up late, I was one of the first few guys to go, which a lot of the other guys would come behind me. So it was very important for me to set the tone and come out strong. So by getting 31 reps, uh, that was actually enough to secure first place in that event. And I think second place was around 25 or 26 reps. Uh, so I had a good lead going into that first event and overall just very happy with my performance. Now the second event was a barrel medley. So there are three barrels and they had a, a light, medium, and a heavy. So for my class, it was uh, anywhere from 160 pounds to right around 200 pounds uh, for our barrels. And they were 50 gallon barrels, so huge barrels. And that's what made this event very difficult was just how big they were and awkward. And there really wasn't uh, many places on the barrel to grip besides maybe a tiny lip on the top and a little uh, divot on the bottom. So this just come, came down to you know, having a genetic advantage of being bigger, having longer arms, and also just having some good grip strength. Um, for these events, I definitely would have recommended wearing some sort of grip shirt or gloves. And in this video, I was wearing uh, gloves, uh, but I've been training without a grip shirt leading all the way up to this. So I didn't want to change anything. Uh, and I just wear, a, you know, a normal t-shirt. So with this event, you guys who have been following me know I'm a pretty athletic dude. And really what it came down to on this was just speed. So during my training prep the whole time, I was just making sure that I was staying as fast as possible. Uh, I was just getting very comfortable with how to handle the implement so that there wasn't gonna be any drops. And also my transitions, I was making sure that I was sprinting as fast as I could to make up time uh, to get to the next barrel. And I dominated this performance as well uh, with 24 seconds. Uh, so that was enough for first place. So at this point in time, uh, I had two first places going into this competition. Now, these were both the events that I was really stoked for to demonstrate my strengths as a strongman. Uh, and then the next event was one that I was a little bit more worried about, which we'll get to now. So the third event was an ascending frame deadlift. So a frame is basically a very large trap bar like deadlift. Uh, it's a little bit more awkward because it's so big. So sometimes if your hands aren't set right, it can either teeter forward or backwards, kind of throwing you off a little bit there. Uh, so just getting used to implement is gonna be huge. The other thing is all frames are different. So for example, the frame that I have in my gym, I can almost pick up a thousand pounds on. And on this frame, uh, as you can see in the video that you, uh, coming up is that I actually hit a PR uh, on this frame, which was nowhere near a thousand pounds. And what made this frame difficult was actually how wide the grip was. So it was more like a snatch grip uh, for me, which is gonna make it more challenging. It was also right at the most uh, difficult point in my deadlift, which is kind of right around 
uh, you know, the knees. So it's basically going to be in more favor with people with a very strong uh, upper back. Uh, and for me, I really rely on my legs. So, you know, having a, a, a smaller pick height would have been more in favor for me, but is what it is. So guys who have strong legs are going to do better from a smaller pick. Guys who have big, strong backs are going to do really well from a higher uh, point up in that deadlift. Uh, but in reality, you just have to do what you can with what you got. Uh, so the way it worked is every rep you completed, it went up 50 pounds uh, per jump. So if you started the frame at 400 pounds, you go up one rep, it's going to be 450, 500, 550, etc. And you get it as high as you can in that 60 second time frame. Now, last minute, the promoters changed the event, which happens. You know, I've had this happen in the past before. You just have to be prepared. And they ended up uh, making the rule that you can pick wherever you wanted to start uh, with your deadlift to try to get the highest possible weight. So instead of all the athletes starting at the, the 400 pound or 450, whatever it was frame and going up, you could pick if you wanted to start at 700 pounds, 800 pounds, and whatever jumps you could get in, that would be the, the total weight, uh, whatever you completed. Now the kicker was if two guys had tied at the same weight, so say you had a guy who pulled 700, another guy who pulled 700, if uh, they had less jumps to get to that weight, they would win. So if someone started at 500 pounds and got to 700, um, and then someone started at 600 pounds and got to 700, whoever started uh, closer to that end weight would win. So a little bit of strategy involved here. And honestly, right before the last minute, I just said, screw it, I'm gonna start exactly how I've been training at the 450 pound frame and we're just gonna work all the way up and see what happens. But since I wanted to put a little bit more strategy in there, I kind of saw what the other guys were pulling. I decided to go with whoever was pulling the heaviest and I was at 700 pounds. So I started at 700 and I got all the way up to 850. So I missed the 900 pound uh, deadlift on the frame. Uh, which, you know, in training, it's been a PR for me to get 850 on that frame, especially because it was, you know, uh, kind of right in the middle of my weak spot for the deadlift. Uh, but that actually put me in second place for that event because someone uh, who had uh, gotten more than me and they got 950 on the frame, which is crazy impressive. And it was actually uh, one of my former athletes and friend, Nick Hines. So he killed it on that event. And if you were to see Nick, he has a huge upper back. So that's going to be a very uh, good event in favor of how he's just built and where his strengths are. So just to kind of backtrack, we have two first place finishes and one second place going into the fourth event. So fourth event was another event that I was really excited to do, and that was a sandbag throw for distance. Now, most sandbag throws are going to be vertical, typically over a bar or for height. Uh, and this one was a little bit different because it was actually throwing the bag backwards as far as you could. Now for this, we had two bags. They were both 50 uh, pounds and they would combine the distance. So if you got two uh, 20 foot bag throws, that would your total would be 40 feet in distance. Uh, so this is something I've been training for, a little bit more athletic event and something I, I knew that I would be pretty confident in doing um, as long as I could keep my technique. So first bag I threw ended up going 31 feet, which was very far. Uh, and that was something I was really stoked about. Uh, kind of where I've been practicing in my training to, to be around on, on a good throw. Uh, so no one was able to touch 31 feet for their first throw. Then we went back through the lineup for our second throw. And I think I got somewhere between 28 and 29 feet. Uh, right as I threw it and let go, I knew that I had let go too early. So I got a lot more amplitude, uh, you know, and it went, it went up way higher than I expected and not so far back. Uh, but it was still enough to secure a first place finish in that event, uh, which I was stoked with. So I have three first place finishes, one uh, second place going into the last and final event. Now the last and final event is something I knew was not going to be my strength. And that was a seated arm over arm truck pull. Uh, we didn't actually know how big this truck was going to be. All we had heard is it was going to be super heavy and no one was really able to pull it at any other uh, shows that this truck was in. So I was anticipating something very heavy, uh, but honestly, I didn't anticipate to be as heavy as it was. It was one of the hardest things I have ever pulled. Uh, and, you know, I, I didn't do as well as I wanted to. Uh, I ended up getting 15 feet with this truck pull. Uh, you know, just trying to keep my fingers crossed that it was going to be enough to hold, you know, either uh, second or third place, which in, in terms of points would have still kept me, uh, you know, in the lead to take home a first. Uh, but there were some other absolute animals in my class that had pulled it uh, over 
you know, 15 feet. I think I came in third in that event uh, with my other buddy, Nick, who had, had taken the deadlift. He had pulled it like 30 something feet and then his training partner as well was in the 30 foot range. Uh, no one was able to complete the pull in the 60 seconds. Uh, however, DK, my training partner, who we call him Frankenstein, he's an absolute you know, just a monster of a human being, almost finished. He was just a few feet shy from finishing and his performance was honestly the highlight uh, of my day. You know, watching your training partner, you know, put all the hard work in and you come to a strongman event where the whole point is to put on a show for people. That was an amazing feat of strength. So shout out to DK for almost completing that truck pull. It was just amazing to see. Um, but, you know, that's kind of what had happened with that competition. Now, overall, you know, super stoked because I ended up taking first uh, in the heavyweight class, which was fantastic. Uh, but what's even more cool is all of our athletes pretty much podiumed. Uh, so we had like a lion's end sweep, which was nice uh, because it was actually hosted at our gym, you know, and we had uh, pretty much an athlete in every single class who took first place. Uh, so as a coach and an athlete, like, you know, I just couldn't be more proud to see, you know, the, the community together, the culture that we've created. Uh, everyone had a blast. It was a great time. And if you haven't done Strongman before, I highly encourage you to do it because of how awesome the community is. So uh, it's, it's been my favorite community and I was just really proud of everybody. So uh, that's basically the recap of the competition. Uh, to be completely honest, I was not very happy with my performance uh, just because I felt like these last few months have been kind of crazy for me. I've been really focusing on the business and my training has just been so-so. Uh, and Honestly, seeing the guys that I compete against, which was a super competitive heavyweight class, I mean, these guys were pushing me. Uh, and I was neck and neck at times with a lot of these athletes. Uh, so it really kind of relit that fire in me to get after it. And that's just a kind of a constant reminder is like never to become complacent or to always try to be, you know, uncommon amongst uncommon people. I've been reading a lot of David Goggins and that, and that guy really hits that point home. Uh, I, I got comfortable with where I was at. So you know, this is just a humble reminder to me to always be grinding, to always be getting after it. You know, try to find uh, that that deep inner fire to become the best version of yourself. Uh, so for that, I'm super grateful for. Uh, and honestly, I've never been more pumped to you know be be training again. And you're going to see a whole other. Uh, beast of a human being in the next several months. So I'm excited to document that. I'm excited to share with you what I'm doing, what I'm changing, and how I'm really going to kind of, you know, uh, turn into the ultimate beast that I can be. But, you know, without keeping this thing too long, I just want to thank Mike and Liz for my friends who promoted the show. You know, I'm happy that we were able to host a facility, especially during these times. Uh, it was just a blast. Like I said, the community was fantastic. The event ran super smooth. Everybody just had a good time. And if you guys haven't been a part of that community, once again, you should definitely try a strongman competition. Uh, my athletes, I'm so proud of you guys. Uh, you know, it's the coolest thing as a coach to watch you guys succeed. Uh, I want to thank DK, my training partner, for always just pushing me and and you know being there for me throughout you know this entire prep. DK drives an hour each way to come and train at the den with me, so that means a lot. Coach Tanya, you know my right hand, she is is the best. She's there, you know, for me on my good days, my bad days, and she's always supporting me, you know, helping me out with tons of other things that go on behind the scenes. So, um, you know, your support just means the absolute world to me and everybody at the lion's den, all the spectators, everybody. It, it was just such a fun day and a blast. And it relit that fire in me, uh, to be the best possible athlete possible, the best possible athlete possible. I said possible a lot, Pfft. man, it's time to wrap this video up. So, uh, if you guys are interested in programming, training tips, anything like that, Zashrank.net. We do tons of programming for top tier athletes and also just people who want to get in shape and chase their fitness goals. So where, wherever you fall on that spectrum, we're here to help you guys out. Uh, so check that out. We have the Facebook group, The Iron Lions. Just type it in in Facebook. Join our free community uh, where we do form checks. We have articles and it's just a place where we can help you progress in that strength training journey. And uh, lastly, I have a new sponsor, which is AT H. <laughs> And lastly, I have a new sponsor, HD Muscle. Uh, so if you guys are looking for the top of the line supplements, which is why I switched uh, supplement companies, because I'm always trying to be on the pursuit of finding the best uh, supplements that I can put in my body and make me a better athlete, I would check them out. Uh, use code ZATSTRENGTH, which will save you some money and you know give you some, some free shipping there, which is just fantastic. Uh, but check out that website. I'll put all the links down below. Uh, but until then, guys, stay in the lean, mean, strength machine. I'll catch up with you guys next time. Peace.